All right, guys. So I was on social media, and as well as I've seen this headline for the past couple of hours, that Paul Pierce makes his case for LeBron James not being a top five player of all time. Uh, so I've not heard any of this. I haven't heard what Paul Pierce stated, no clips. So I'm going to go in here and state, you know, kind of go back and forth, chime in, see what Paul Pierce says, kind of go back and forth with him uh, as well. So kind of a funny thing, Game of Zones came out this last episode, and uh, Paul Pierce was... <laughs> Named as the unanim- uh, unanimous goats uh, over LeBron James, so I think that's kind of funny the timing uh, spec of things. But yeah, let's see what Paul Pierce says, and we we'll jump back and forth in here. And welcome to NBA Countdown Stay Home Edition. We've all made it to May. You look good, J Rose. I look. I feel very nice. This would be a Fuji in the nineties. Right. <laughs> but what is it now, though? What brand is it now, though? Givon Chi. Ooh. Ooh. I see you, J. Bro. You can't hide money, Maria. You can't. 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 <laughs> and an all-time great in his own right, Jay Williams, found ways to debate the fact that LeBron James's greatness now has dropped him out of Paul Pierce's five. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. So we're gonna make this a discussion. Yes, it is now the discussion, Paul. I'm sorry. Yes, it is now Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead, tell the world. I want to. Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead, tell the world. Hold on. Before Paul Pierce goes in and reveals his top five or why LeBron James is not in it, uh, I've been clear in the first couple of my videos I posted that LeBron James is hovering around that number five, number six all time spot. Uh, I know a lot of cats are going to get pretty triggered off that. There's just a lot of fanboys out there who actually think two-dimensionally and don't even break things down. Listen, guys, I'm talking about career accomplishments. I'm talking about career rankings being in the NBA. So I don't take high school into consideration. I don't take college. I don't take what you did off the court. I talk about and I look and evaluate. Uh, I have key metrics, and it's very simple. How many championships did you lead your team as being the number one option and the leader? That's number one. Number two, we can look into how many championships then and finals MVPs do you have? These finals MVPs do translate into category number one. How many championships did you lead your team into? I pretty much go neck and hand in hand. I'll start to look and evaluate into MVPs. How many playoff appearances? Uh, Whenever you started in the career, I don't really take into account if you missed the playoffs the first couple of years, but I look at your progression. Whenever you're in your prime, were you the best in that era? Were you the best position uh, as a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, for power forward, or center? Uh, so we can look at, for example, Michael Jordan, greatest player of all time, no debate. He was the greatest shooting guard of all time. He won six championships, led his team six finals. He had six finals MVPs. Then I start to evaluate. Okay, well, no one else can touch that. Uh, then I start to evaluate. He has five regular season MVPs. Then you look more into his stats. Average over 30 Points per game easily in the season with a defensive player of the year, uh, being in the best defensive uh, players of all time. And then as well as uh, Michael Jordan was shooting over 50%. Putting into these things in consideration, I don't have to go too much in depth, but my top five is very clear as of right now. And it can change depending on LeBron James winning more championships. Uh, number one, Michael Jordan. Number two, I do have Bill Russell. Number three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number four, Magic Johnson. Number five, I do have LeBron James. But Larry Bird and LeBron could be interchangeable. They're very close together that a lot of people do not really understand. It's more of a debate of LeBron and Larry Bird uh, than it is for LeBron and Michael Jordan. This is why. And it's something when I watched, and it all came from the last dance, episode 10, when it was torn to end, and they went back to a clip to Michael Jordan when he said, I want to build up an organization similar to like what the Boston Celtics are, what the 76ers are, and and we all know what the Lakers tradition is. You know, all the great players built up their tradition of their organizations. Kareem, Magic. Kobe and Shaq continued the tradition. 
winning three together, two more for Kobe on his own. Berg continued the tradition with the Boston Celtics, winning three there. Jordan started a tradition in Chicago, six there. Tim Duncan, Spurs were weren't even on the map until Tim Duncan got there. He built up that organization. So when I go back and I talk about these players and the top five players who not only built up organizations or helped continue the organization tradition a la Kobe, I go back and I ask myself, what has LeBron did to build up any organization from the ground? What does that have to do? Okay, Jay Williams had a good point. What does that have to do with anything? I agree with that. Uh, listen to me. Whenever it comes to staying with an organization and building your way around it, that's great, amazing. It has a great feel to it. But it gets boring sometimes when you have a couple of years to where the organization is down and you can't bring in the players for that player. LeBron James did change the game up of adding player mobility, and that's not a detriment to him. What is a detriment which a lot of people can say is whenever you're starting to create super teams and you're losing in the finals, that's where I'll start to knock off LeBron. And as well as if you're creating a super team, not doing much in there, you're pretty much relying on people to win for you. That hasn't been the case for LeBron. He's always been uh, the best player in all of his championship teams. Whenever Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh got hurt a couple of times during the regular season, we could see the detriment to the Miami Heat. And LeBron had to be able to pretty much take the load on uh, the only season was in 2011 to where LeBron didn't have to do too much, but they didn't win the championship. Uh, but Paul Pierce is saying here, I, I, I get it, but with LeBron, whenever he was on the Cavaliers, took him to uh, an NBA Finals, his first tenure, four NBA Finals straight whenever he came back. So he does elevate the franchise. That's what LeBron does. He's been on three different franchises. We've seen in every single case he's done that, which makes him amazing. Uh, but let's go a little further into what Paul Pierce is kind of backing that up because that does not do make the case of the not making him top five. Talk about these great players. Now, the name the players that I say, they're all top flight players in the top five or top ten. Bill Russell built up the organization of Boston. Should get way more credit than we give him. He, and a lot of times he gets left out of the uh, conversation. So in saying that, Kareem, look at the names that I said. Kareem, Magic, Jordan, Tim Duncan, Kobe, Bird. These guys are all top 10 players who either help build up their organization or continue the tradition. And in saying, the, the, the one thing that is from LeBron. He went and put together a team in Miami. I think there's a lot of... Comp- I- he came back to Cleveland to put that team together. And then he went to the Lakers where a tradition has already been made and we don't know, you know, that's still to be continued. So in saying that... Okay, Paul Pierce is just spewing a bunch of nonsense at this point. You can even see it on his face. I agree with Jay Williams on this point. I usually don't agree, uh, agree with Jay Williams. But yeah, LeBron, player mobility, he creates team, but he's still the number one player. He doesn't rely on other players to pretty much save the day for him. Well, only those two shots in the finals. But he doesn't rely on these players to elevate their game to average you know, 20, 30 points to help him out. So that's not the case for Paul Pierce. Whenever you're looking at LeBron James, he's hovering around the five or six area all time because he has three championships. He's had player mobility of creating these quote-unquote super teams or being a le GM, as they call it, but he's lost six finals. And it does not matter what competition he has played. Whenever you have that much freedom to choose a team, your players, and you're implementing your own system, that, that's all you need. There's no other excuse within that. And LeBron, back in 2017 or 2016 for agency after he won the championship, he elected to opt into two more years into Cleveland. That's on him. If you're Mr. Mr. Player Mobility and being quote unquote the best at it, revolutionizing, then you failed. LeBron pretty much has kind of failed in doing the player mobility. LeBron could have gone head to the wire and have six or seven championships. We're looking at 2011. We expected LeBron at this time to have six or seven championships easily. And if you would have told someone, hey, in 2011, you know, it's 2020 now, LeBron only has three chips, they would have said, you're crazy. That, that's a failure. But that's, That's what it argument. is, so let's, let's see what's on here. Paul, 
You're I'm talking about a great. I'm you're talking about a great organization. I mean, you're not talking about one. Guy, just be a numbers guy. I'm, you know I'm, I'm not for Paul. J. Rose said it. I mean, maybe Kuji used to be back in 30 years ago. Jevon G is in now, right? So back in the day, starter jackets used to be in. I used to love my team, and now kids follow individual players. Just because he didn't build up an organization, he got Cleveland the first chip they ever had in the history of the franchise. And by the way, who was the GM? I mean, like, who was the head coach for LeBron James? Who was his owner? Like, my thing, you're talking about Michael who was Jordan. Bill Jackson for my Wait, wait, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out now, time out now. At the end of the last game, it's not the organization, it's the players. You're tripping, Paul. At the end of the day, I understand that. I think there's fact on both ways. But you're telling me at the end of the last dance, Scotty Pippen said, man, as much as I hate it, Jerry Krause is going to go down one of the greatest GMs of all time. Maybe the greatest GM of all time. So the all time, all time, all time, all time, yeah, he dropped. These guys are such children. <laughs> I get what Paul Pierce is saying, and that's what I like about Michael Jordan. Uh, people always say, oh, well, LeBron, or, or not LeBron. People are always saying, oh, Michael Jordan, the greatest coach of all time. Well, yeah, I mean, look during that time. Phil Jackson was an assistant coach. He was being bounced around. No one cared about him. Michael Jordan implemented and trusted his coach and the system of the triangle, and that's elevated both of them. That's something LeBron doesn't have. He doesn't have trust. LeBron does not have patience. What LeBron wants is... Uh, well, LeBron doesn't even want a good coach. He wants to run his own system. But LeBron wants good players right here, right now. Uh, he can't wait on the young star or you know young cats like in the Lakers or uh, on the Cavaliers of the last season to develop. And I mean, I agree with LeBron. That, that's the thing with LeBron. When you have him on your team, it's either championship or bust every season. Uh, but that's why LeBron needs to implement. You know, sticking. The thing is, LeBron sticks with the team for four years and dips. So he's like a he's like a wormhole. He's like a a black hole per se. So he'll go in. He'll take all the resources of your of of your team, your whole organization. Try to maximize them to what fits his style. And then whenever it's like a twenty thirty percent chance it goes through in four seasons, then he'll just dump you out, and then you're left stranded with no resources, terrible cap space, uh, players with big contracts. And then you're just stuck there. So that's the thing with LeBron. It's a lot of baggage with him. Get your popcorn, Maria. Let him go. I mean, he wasn't the first pick in the draft. It was a no-brainer, Paul. Listen, dog. It was a no-brainer. How come people got drafted over him, Paul? It wasn't a no-brainer. The reason they didn't draft Jordan to, to, to Portland was because they had Clyde Drexler. But, hey, you got the number one pick. All right, well, let me, let me skip a little more here because these guys are just kind of going back and forth. I want to see what his Arguing. top five are. All right. Arguing. Nothing, nothing Jalen. Nothing, Jalen. Okay, okay. All right, guys. So we have here, this is the need and the greedy. Paul Pierce's top five. This is what I wanted to see. So Michael Jordan, number one, I agree with. Number two, Kareem. And then number three, Bill. Those two, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm fine if you think Bill Russell three and Cream two. I have Bill two, Cream number three. So I mean, okay. So so far he's pretty right. Number four, Magic Johnson. Exactly what I've been saying. Number five, Kobe Bryant. All right, guys. <laughs> I had a video I posted uh, uh, a couple of days ago uh, saying if Kobe Bryant's a top ten player of all time. In that video, you'll be able to see that I have LeBron. Or not LeBron. I have Kobe around nine through eleven. Uh, whenever we go more in depth with all these players, I'll, I'll create another video about Kobe Bryant and my top 10 players more in depth. Uh, but when you have players such as LeBron James, Larry Bird, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan, those are players that are in the rankings of their whole career are ahead of Kobe Bryant. Uh, when it comes to Kobe, you got to remember, guys, people, even though he was he won those three championships with Shaq, he was still the second fiddle. He wasn't the foundation of the team. As you can see, whenever Shaquille O'Neal left the Los Angeles Lakers, they they lost in the first round multiple times. They missed a playoff appearance. It took three to four years so they can actually build a team for Kobe surrounding him. And Kobe even demanded trades during that time period. Uh, but let's see why wow. says Kobe's so, five. So here's what I'll say to Jay wow. Will. Every home has things it needs, things that need to be fixed. Or, I'm not mad at that. I'm, I love Kobe. Kobe be fixed up. Brian's one of my favorite players of all time. But I'm just saying, like, 
it's funny. It's like you guys see LeBron, and because he's. I'm mad you put Kobe in the top five. Because originally in Cleveland, he didn't have the right support system put in place by a good GM or a good coach. Yeah, I think, you know, he went a different direction than all the guys I named. And then even, even so, some of so the guys. If I don't do it the same way Paul Pierce does it, I can't achieve greatness. That's what you're saying. I mean, when you go searching, I can't do it the same way all these other guys do it. When, when, when you go searching out and they don't come to you, then, then that, that's not that's not. Good. All right, I'm gonna stop there. So Paul Pierce has a great point of not making LeBron either a top five or dwindling around there, but he's using the wrong excuses. Saying LeBron a player mobility, not being like the other players, that that's that's not something you would take him out of being top five. Now the reason why LeBron is dingling around not being top five or is number five in that position is because he's he's underachieved with he's like a he's a modern day Will Chamberlain Will Chamberlain had high amount of stats great athleticism one of the best athletes of all time dominant when it came to the regular season stats but he underperformed when it came to championships winning those uh Will Chamberlain was two and four in the finals LeBron is three and six in the finals and he used to be two and four as well uh, so LeBron's kind of in that, that atmosphere because he has player mobility as well as he's been playing for 17 seasons. So LeBron's kind of in that class when it comes to Wilt. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop the, I'm gonna stop the, uh, the video here. Uh, so, you know, Paul Pierce, he had Kobe Bryant number five. Uh, actually, I have LeBron over that. But I'll probably make another video for another day going against LeBron versus Kobe.